Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to explore an awesome new content pack from developer Fortune and it is the dinosaur pack that you see being demoed in front of you right here. This includes a whole bunch of awesome models, the T-Rex, the Velociraptors, a Pterodactyl, and I believe the other one is the Pterodon, the uh, Pterodactyl's smaller cousin. We're going to be exploring how to use these uh, awesome looking models, how you can customize their motions and uh, you know create herds of them and everything like that. So what you see on the screen right now is a uh, pack of dinosaurs just kind of, you know, ambling along here. And notice the differences in all these dinosaurs. Really cool, uh, really cool as far as uh, materials and animations go. We're going to explore them uh, momentarily. But let's take a look at where you can find these models first. I need to go up to your set tab. They'll be saved as iProps. So you want to go set and props and then into your dinosaur bundle section. You can see them all right here. There's various types in various colors that you can customize. And let's zoom in a little bit on the uh, T-Rex here. You can see he has some really nice detail on the scales. Um, all of these animals have really nice uh, skin and uh, texture on their uh, on their bodies. Um, let's take a look at this uh, T-Rex, for example. You can see the nice, uh, you know, ripply muscles along there. And uh, these also contain, if I go to the Modify tab into my Materials, they contain a Diffuse, a Bump, and a Specular Map. So the Bump Map, you can see right here, if we take that strength all the way down, you can see we don't get as much detail. Whereas if we increase it, we get those nice uh, detailed looking scales, which are really a, a nice selling point for this uh, for this pack. Whether or not you're using them for a Jurassic Park type scenario or a Godzilla type scenario, really cool stuff. And they also contain a specular map. So if you want to make the sh uh, skin a little bit shinier or anything like that, you can go down here to your specular and glossy. You, know, you can you don't want to make them too glossy or too too uh, bright or shiny actually, but you just want to kind of you know, balance these two and you can target the, uh, the shininess with the glossiness slider here as well. I like to kind of do something like this. And then as uh, this dinosaur moves along, you can see that uh, the glistening along the uh, scales and everything like that, which looks uh, you know, really cool. So really, really high detail in these models. And you can use them for close-ups and everything like that. And uh, that's pretty much it for the materials. And of course, you can, you know, customize the color as well. If you, you know, for example, went down to this uh, little Velociraptor dude over here. Uh, we can go down to the uh, hue, saturation, and uh, all these color balance uh, sliders right here. You can modify those if you wanted him to be a bit more red or a bit... Uh, well, that's the specular I'm looking at right here. And to change to the uh, diffuse channel uh, up here. Make sure we're on the specular channel. And you can see the... Uh, you make it redder or more cyan, right? Like that. And kind of just change the uh, the skin. You can even change the, the hue slider right here as well if you want like a purple dinosaur or a you know, green dinosaur like this. Uh, Depends entirely on what sort of scenario you're looking at there. You can customize those as well, and they end up looking pretty pretty decent in the end. You can do that for all the dinosaurs as well. So let's take a look now at how you can create a herd of these dinosaurs. Now to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, delete the uh, pterodactyls. Uh, control click and select all these dudes right here. And you can see we have these, uh, let's delete this guy as well actually. So we have this one dinosaur right here. Now, because these are iProps, you can actually just simply control, click and drag them to create a copy of them. So you can see this dinosaur we have walking like this. If I want to create a copy of him, I can just hold control and click and drag. And that creates another dinosaur like this. And uh, we can resize him down to a little bit smaller, something like that. And then, you know, control, click and drag him forward as well. Um, before we do that, actually, I'm going to press control Z. Before we do that, you can see the large dinosaur and the small dinosaur are kind of walking at the same pace. So you may want to modify the walking speed of these dinosaurs slightly. Now to apply the motions uh, from these dinosaurs, all you need to do is right click and go to perform. And I've just used the loop walk motion right here. So that's been already been applied. So if I press F3 and go into the timeline and I go into my animation track right here, you can see we have this loop walk motion clip and I've looped it a few times. So this one looks okay. What I may want to do with this one here is I want to go to that same animation track and we can also select this one and use our speed slider let me make it a little bit you know faster okay so now what we have is we have him walking a little bit faster because he is a smaller dinosaur with smaller legs and he's walking a little bit faster I want to turn down that specular value on these dinosaurs here the scales are a little bit too shiny <laughs> just uh, kind of bothering me there let's take down that specular slightly there we go Something like that will do. All right. And uh, then again, you can make another copy of these. You can uh, 
you know, control, click and drag. Make a, a giant one over here if you want. So just R, uh, use our hotkey and scale that one up like this. And then we have the papa, the mama, and the baby T-Rex going on. And uh, go to the animation tab and we'll stretch this one out quite significantly. Maybe something like that. So then we have, you know, maybe a little bit too exaggerated. Let's try something a little bit less. There you go. Okay, and they're all like, you know, walking at different paces. Obviously, the large one doesn't have to take as many steps. That's how you can really uh, do that. Um, create herds, easily create herds of dinosaurs and customize the walking speed really simply. Let's take a look now at how we can apply motions to these dinosaurs. So I'm going to select uh, the two other dinosaurs and just delete them. We're going to focus on our main dinosaur right here. Just press the F hot key to kind of get a front view and then and zoom in like this. Now I'm going to right click on the dinosaur and remove object animation. So that's going to remove all that walking animation we have. And I'm going to combine a few animations together really easily. So I'm just going to right click on the dinosaur and perform. You can see we have a number of different perform motions, a whole library of them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose one. There is a uh, roaring, uh, strat roaring it says. It's supposed to be start roaring. Sorry for the typo there. Start roaring. So the dinosaur begins to roar like that. And you go to perform and then loop roaring. You can see the tongue wags like that, really creepy and freaky looking. And then we can right click perform and end roaring. And it goes back into his regular position there. So then we have something like this. Okay, and that's three motion clips that show up in our animation track. Now, if I want, I'm just going to click and drag to select all these uh, motions here and just bring them to the front. Uh, whoops, right there. And uh, okay, so what you want to do is maybe you want to uh, change the timing of this of this loop in the middle. So it looks fairly linear. You know, you're just going back and forth, almost like clockwork. If you wanted to, you can right click it and select time warp, and that'll time warp the clip. If I chose something like ease in and ease out, uh, what's going to happen is most of the motion is going to happen in the middle of the clip here, and it's going to ease in at the beginning of the clip, and it's going to ease out at the beginning of the clip. So we get something like this. Everything happens in the middle and then it kind of just slows down at the end. What you may want to do as well is just try a simple something like uh, ease in, uh, for example. And if we ease in, you can see most of the motion happens at the end. And you can you really time your roars using these ease ins and ease outs. I'm just going to go back to linear for a moment. Another way you can do this is you can just simply, you know, click somewhere in the middle of the clip, right click and break that clip. And then you can take uh, this clip, I'm going to control select both these clips and move them over here, and maybe we wanted to, uh, you know, uh, make this part a little bit longer. Uh, we can stretch it out like this by taking that section and just clicking and dragging it. And then what we have is, you know, slow roar at front, and then it gets a little bit faster at the end there. All right, so you can, you know, combine them and uh, break clips. It's really easy to do this, just breaking clips and modifying them and, you know, combining them together. Uh, really simple procedure. So I just wanted to really want to show you how you can just do a quick, uh, three motion, three perform motion combo and modify the timing of all that and everything as well. All right, so next let's look at how we can customize these perform motions using motion key editing. So what I'm going to do with this uh, new T-Rex on the screen here is apply a uh, perform motion to him. We're going to right click and just go to perform and then we're going to go to uh, loop walking. So loop walk right here and we'll loop that a couple times. I'm going to go F3 into the timeline here. Uh, make sure we have our uh, animation track selected for our uh, T-Rex there. And I'm just gonna loop this, make sure we have a loop selected, and we'll loop the walk a few times, all right? Just something like this. All right, so what I wanna do is, in the middle of this walk, I want the T-Rex to kinda of look to the left, uh, as he's kinda of like maybe looking at us in camera or something. So in order to do that, what I wanna do is go into my Modify tab, into Motions, and go into the Edit Animation Layer tool right here. And you can see if we have bone edit mode enabled, we have the number of different bones in our characters, uh, or our model's body here. We can go into the bone settings and maybe increase the bone size as well if we'd like. Uh, I like to do that normally for these kind of props, maybe put it to a Tony or something. And then you can just simply select them like this. So I can select the jaw, press the E hotkey and kind of rotate it outwards. And you can see the mesh kind of just conform along with the movement of the jaw, which is uh, pretty cool. And you can press Control Z and undo that. Now, if you want to start off a keyframe animation, I'd recommend just going ahead and uh, opening your uh, track here. You want to open the animation layer track first. Now, you can either double click in this track or you can just press reset. 
in the uh, edit motion layer panel right here. And that'll create a keyframe that begins your keyframe animation. So from here to maybe here, we want the dinosaur to look at us, uh, not the jaw rather. We're going to take the neck this time and uh, we're going to just move the neck over this way and kind of facing us like this. And so what we have now is as our dino is walking along, he's turning towards us. And for the amount of time we want that uh, head to be turned, we need to right click. We can either right click on the dope sheet or the actual animation layer uh, keyframe here and then copy it. And then maybe we want to take a few steps, one, two, three, and then just uh, right click and paste that. And then we can go over to here and just press reset again. That's going to reset it back to the original data in the motion clip. So then we have something like this looking over at us and then he gets disinterested and keeps going. All right, so let's go ahead and in the middle of this, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to increase, or also going to take the dinosaur's jaw and open it up a little bit. Okay, so he's going to be like roaring. So I'm going to press the tab key. Uh, if you select your keyframe, you go press the tab key, that'll take you to the next keyframe in that track. You can press shift tab to go backwards. Okay, so tab and shift tab, really useful little tip there. And I'm going to open the uh, jaw of this dinosaur here. I'm going to take that jaw and just kind of open it up like that. And then we're going to uh, we're going to have to right click on this keyframe here and copy it, press tab and then control V and paste it. So now he's going to be opening opening his mouth the entire way, turning our, over here and opening it. And uh, we w then want his tongue to start flickering. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're just going to go to maybe about uh, this frame right here, and we'll go ahead and take that tongue, the uh, bone right here. We're going to bring the tongue down like this. Rah. You can see the tongue is uh, pretty flexible here. And then we can go to a frame like this over here and bring that tongue up the opposite way. So we're going to take this and go like that. Take this bone, bring it up, and take that bone and bring the tip of the tongue up there as well. And then we can just go ahead and select these two uh, keyframes right here, Control C, and then go maybe, you know, up this far down, Control V, and then Control V. We can even control V one more time. And then we have something like this. Rah. So the tongue's kind of flickering as he turns around and faces us. So let's close that down and take a look at what it looks like from uh, our perspective here. So we'll just go ahead and play back the entire animation. And he looks over at us. Rah. And just kind of flicks that tongue. And, uh, you know, obviously we're not tasty enough for this dinosaur. But anyways, that's about it for uh, how you can customize the perform motions. Now, finally, what I'm going to show you is how to create a transform animation. Now, to do that, I'm going to delete this dinosaur. We're going to bring in a pterodactyl. So let's go ahead and just double-click our pterodactyl A and bring it in. And what I'm going to do is we're going to apply a couple of perform motions to our pterodactyl right off the bat here. Let's go ahead and bring him a little bit up on the uh, world plane here first. Press the W hotkey and bring him up to about here because he is, is in fact, an airborne uh, mammal or reptile. I'm not sure what pterodactyls are. Anyways, we'll right-click the pterodactyl and select Perform. I want to perform a flying loop like this. And we're going to right-click Perform it again. And then we're going to right-click and perform the uh, loop soaring. So he goes into a soaring position right here. And then we're going to right-click and perform Start Nosedive. He's going to go into a nosedive, right-click Perform, Loop Nosedive. And then we're going to right-click Perform and Attack capture from the air. So he's going to do like a flip and kind of bring out his claws and, and attack like this. And then what we have is this in the end. So flapping, flapping, going like this. Now one little thing to note here is that I press F3 and go into the timeline. I'm going to open up that animation track again there. So uh, I'm going to also take these, all these clips and bring them to the very front here. Sometimes it won't apply to the very first frame. So we have loop flying, loop flying, and then from here to here, you can see it kind of goes, maybe it's a little bit too fast to go back into the soaring position. So we can take this soaring clip and we can increase that transition uh, size. There you go. It looks a little bit more natural, a little bit smoother, the uh, transition from uh, flapping to uh, soaring right there. So you can increase transition sizes to do that. And then we have, you know, basically everything else I showed you, soaring and attacking. All right, so what we want to do is in the transform track, we have this one keyframe that's we get, uh rather indicates our uh, initial position. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, flap, 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 flap. 
as he's soaring, as he begins his descent, then we are going to just um, move this dinosaur over a little bit. So he's going to be flying. It creates another transform keyframe. So what we have is something like this. Flapping, yada, yada. And of course, if you want that to be faster, you can just go ahead and take your transform, press the tab key to go to the other one, uh, the next transform keyframe, and just bring it ahead further. And then you have a uh, faster flying speed like that. If you want it to be slower, you can bring it back a little bit further. Okay, so we'll go to here, and then from here to here, he's going to be flying downwards, and then here is where he kind of reaches the base of his attack, where his claws are forward, you can see like that, and they're attacking something like that. So that's going to be the base of his attack. So here is where we want to bring him down to, uh, you know, pretty much ground level. And something like that, maybe not into the ground, but something like that will do. And then what we have is, you know, flying, 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 and then zoom, attacking and diving into the ground right there. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now, uh, what we can do to uh, make that a bit more realistic, because right now the, it's kind of like a linear motion from there to there. Uh, what we can do is we can actually right-click this keyframe, choose Transition Curve, and choose Ease In and Ease Out. And that's going to make most of the most of the transition uh, most of the transform position happen between these two areas right here. So you can see most of the distance is being covered between this area here. It's easing out very nicely, and then room like that, and then easing out very nicely. So we have a more realistic pattern like that. Okay, I think he's going into the ground, so we want to take him a little bit out of the ground here. You can hold Alt and Shift and both mouse buttons to zoom in and out a little bit faster in long distance uh, positions like this. And let's go ahead and just add in a, a couple of things to emphasize our scene here. Let's go to uh, skies and we'll you know, give ourselves a nice uh, sky 03 here. Maybe go to uh, terrains, um, height maps and just load in a canyon or something like that. And then what we have is a, a nice, uh, I'm going to press control G to turn off the grid there. And we have this nice uh, Vista right here. So let's just go ahead and make sure that our pterodactyl isn't uh, going into the ground. Let's make sure he's, uh, oh, looks like he's about to dive headfirst into that cliff. Let's see if he makes it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we have to bring him a little bit further up. Tab right there. And uh, obviously we don't want him to be inside the cliff. So let's bring him up like this. And then, oh, there we go. Okay. So he will no longer fall into the cliff there. And if we want to add some more emphasis to that, let's do a couple of quick camera animations. Let's press F to focus on our pterodactyl here. And let's just go to create a camera. And I'm going to make, choose a 20 millimeter uh, camera focal length. I'm going to zoom in on our uh, pterodactyl right here at frame one. Get a nice view of the uh, background. And we want to link it, so press uh, the U hotkey again to toggle our last selected camera. That's the U hotkey, link, get current, get the pterodactyl, and then do, 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 flying like this, and then as he's about to dive, we want to have uh, kind of a rear perspective of our uh, pterodactyl here. We want to kind of see him you know, diving into the uh, into the ground there, and add a bit more of a dynamic uh, look to it. So, you know, two simple camera keyframes like that, we have a nice camera movement where we see the vista and then just like that. Okay, and you can add more emphasis onto that as well, but it's not really a camera tutorial. So we're just going to leave it at that. So that's about it for this tutorial, guys. Make sure you check out our other tutorial on how to convert your uh, Fortune dinosaurs into eye avatars so you can change their proportions and all, all sorts of other fun stuff and uh, create custom motions and add those to your perform list. And make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com. I'll see you in the next video.